Welcome to this video on the topic of polynomials and functions. In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can use our technology to help us graph polynomial functions. Now, a polynomial function can easily be graphed using the aid of technology. Consider the function p of x is equal to x plus 4 times x minus 2 all squared times x minus 5. What we're going to do is we're going to use our technology to first graph this, find all of our x-intercepts, and then find all of our y-intercepts if there's more than one. So, first thing we're going to do is graph. All right, to do this, what we say is up we come to our calculator, and we are presented with the top menu over here. To get into the graph mode, I either navigate using the D-pad and click execute, or I press five. Next, I'm presented with all the available slots to put functions in. Now, this one's empty, and that's sort of a good thing because it means I'm less likely to have any problems if the memory's already occupied. So if I scroll down, I wanna make sure that there's nothing in here. If you've got a function in there that you want, you can press select on it and that will turn it off for now. But otherwise, we're going to put our function into slot one. So doing that, I go open parentheses. I use this X over here and then I just write it like it's presented over here. I'll do this with the remainder of the function. All right, I've got it in there. Next step is I wanna graph this. So what I'm going to do is I press F6 on my calculator. And what that does is it shows me the graphical representation of this polynomial over here. Now, one thing you might notice is that, well, we can't have a really good look at it because it's not in focus. What we need to do is we want to set the horizontal span such that we can see all of our X intercepts. Now to know how to set this, I need to have a bit of a reasonable understanding of this function here. What I can see with this particular function is looking at it, it goes X plus four, X minus two and X minus five. In other words, it's in its factorized form. And because of that, I can know what the roots are going to be or the x-intercepts. So in this case, I know that there are going to be zeros at x equals minus four plus two, and finally five. Bringing up the calculator, I'm going to make it such that I can see up to at least negative five on the x-axis and positive six. So I can see all of the intercepts clearly. To do this, I go into F3 so V window and I set X min and max to negative 5 and 6 respectively. I use negative down here so negative 5 and then I take it up to 6. Okay I press exit and click draw again and what you can see is that it's spaced out the horizontal axis a bit but I still need to sort out my Y axis. Now I could do guess and check here, but a more efficient way is I press F2 for zoom and then I go auto. And what this will do is it doesn't affect my horizontal viewing window, but it makes it such that I can see all of the, all of the potential vertical values. So I don't have to mess around with the Y min and Y max here. I can just do that. So what we can now see is all of the important features of this function are now visible on our calculator screen. Next step, what we want to do is we want to be able to see or use the calculator to tell us what the roots are going to be. Okay, to be able to determine what the roots are, we simply go F5 for G-solve and then there's F1 for root. I click root and lo and behold, it tells me that the first root is at negative four, two, and five, just as we expected over here. Now in this case, we didn't have to do this, but it's a useful function to know in the case that your polynomial is not in its factorized form. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at how we can determine this y-intercept here. All right, to determine the y-intercept, what we do is we go into G-solve using F5 again, and then we simply click Y intercept. And lo and behold, it tells you that for this particular function, the Y intercept is at negative 80. Now, if we were to want to graph this on pen and paper, this is a valuable tool to use because it basically tells us all of the important features that we need to be able to graph this. Now doing this, what I first do is I set up my y-axis, or my x-axis I should say, just like so. 
and I look at the shape. Now what I can see is that it's roughly 50-50, so I'll do something like that. I know that I'm going to cut the y-axis at negative 80, so let's just say negative 80 is around here. Now all I need to do is try and fit a polynomial that looks like this curvature into this graph over here. So it's a little bit difficult, but not terrible, but also not good, but good enough consider it's drawn on a computer. So what we've had a look at is how we can graph this polynomial here in its factorized form with the aid of technology here. Technology helping us know what the polynomial looks like, verify that the roots are these, and to tell us the y-intercept. All right, let's have a look at example when we're not in factorized form. Let's have a look at an example when we are in expanded form. Now again, the process is more or less the same. We go back and all we need to do is plug this polynomial into here. So I'll turn this one off firstly by clicking select and that will make sure it won't graph again. And then I'll put this polynomial in. Now in this case, I've got Z. When I'm putting it in the calculator, I don't get Z. I simply need to pretend that Z is X. So I just throw X in. All right, easy does it. And then I hit F6. Now, once again, this is a fourth order polynomial. So I'm expecting to see at least four different roots or um, yeah, basically four different roots, even if they're double. So I've got one, two, three. So what this tells me is that there's a root elsewhere. Now, what I typically do to do this is I extend the V window out quite significantly. So I might go negative, let's say 50 and 50 over here. And then I will just graph it again and hope for the best. Now again, I can see all my roots now. However, it's not very focused. So what I'll do is I'll use G-Solve and I'll use G-Solve to tell me where all the roots are at. So I can see one's at negative seven, zero, one, and three. Okay, so that's a practical application of using the root solver. Now, since I've got those, I might as well simply set my horizontal V window now. So I want to see at least up to negative seven. So I'll go a little bit further and say negative eight. And then I'll go a little bit further than three and say four. Graphing again. Now I'm going to set the vertical window. To do this, I go zoom auto and look at that it is now beautiful next step is we want to have a look at what our y-intercept in this case is so i go g solve y-intercept and it cuts at zero so now it's simply a matter of fitting this sort of curvature to this graph over here so i need to do at least negative eight up to let's say four go for it. It's reasonably not terrible. All right. And there we have this polynomial up here represented in its graphical form over there. So in summary, what we had a look at in this video was firstly how we could get our polynomials into our calculators. Then we had a look at how we can use our calculators to tell us the roots of the polynomial and then similarly how we can get it to tell us the intercept so the y-intercept now one more thing we can look at is how we can graph both of these together now notice how i turn this one off using select here i can turn it back on and i can graph to it once so many different options you can use for graphing these so this was a video demonstrating how we can use our technology to graph our polynomial functions Thank you.